Today we're back on the Walter Helitronic Power 400 and we're going to show you how to make some money by using these plates. For the first time ever, we're going to show you how to build a wheel, we're going to program a custom carbide drill, and we're going to program Walter Helitronic Power 400's unique feature, the top loader. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta build our wheels. So we're gonna come up to our Terralit wheel cabinet. We're gonna grab our Terralit StarTech RC, which is gonna be our roughing wheel. Then we're gonna grab our Terralit StarTech XPP Plus. These are gonna be new wheels and we're gonna see how they're gonna hold up. I got all the wheels I need. Let's go build them. Go get them, Mike! Hustle in there! Our first wheel is gonna be our Terralit StarTech RC wheel. This is gonna be a 1A1 wheel. It's gonna be our roughing wheel. So that just goes directly onto our arbor. Now, in order to separate these parts, we're gonna use a spacer. We're gonna use a spacer between our RC wheel and our Terralit StarTech XPP Plus. So our angled wheel that we're gonna be using for our gashing cycle is gonna be a Terralit StarTech XPP Plus wheel. It's gonna be a 30 degree angle with a 5,000th radius. Now, in order to separate our gashing wheel from our cup wheel, we're gonna use another spacer. So this spacer is gonna locate in between our gashing wheel and our cup wheel. Now, the cup wheel we're gonna be using is gonna be a Terralit StarTech XPP DS. So the cup wheel is going to complete our triple wheel pack and that's going to sit right on there. Then we're going to put our locking washer down and we're going to line up the groove with the internal groove of our wheel arbor. Now to hold everything together we're going to screw on our thread and we'll grab our tool. Now this tool has two holes. It's going to go in between this locking nut and it's going to go hole to hole and you're just going to tighten it down. That's how we built our triple wheel pack. So now let's go ahead and build our single 1A1 wheel pack. First thing we're going to start off is tool arbor. Make sure that's locked down. Make sure our mating surfaces are clean. Now, since we're only using a single 1A1 wheel, we need a lot of spacers in order to push that wheel out to the outer edge. So we're gonna start with one spacer. One, two, three. Now that we've got our spacers in order, we're gonna grab our Terralit StarTech XPP Plus wheel. This is gonna be a 1A wheel. What makes this wheel different than our Terralit StarTech RC wheel is that it's gonna be more narrow. We need a narrow profile of a 1A1 wheel in order to grind the outside diameter clearance so we don't overlap our flutes. So, just mount it right on. Now what those spacers did is they took up space and pushed our wheel to the most outer edge that way we can have more clearance. Now we need another spacer. Now what we need is we need our groove washer. We're gonna line up our groove with the inside groove of our shaft. Next thing we need, we need our locking washer. Line up our two holes with the two holes on top of our face. Lock her down. So that completes our second wheel pack. So now we have two wheel packs. We can go ahead and load them into the machine. Don't miss out on any of our custom grinds. If you like what we're doing, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that notification bell. That way when a new video comes out, you don't miss the release. So let's break down our grind. Our first wheel that we're gonna be using is gonna be a Terralit StarTech RC wheel. This wheel right here is gonna be phenomenal at roughing out carbide. So let's go and hit cycle start, probe the end of our tool, and we're gonna feed in at five inches a minute and see how the tool does. So with our Terralit StarTech RC wheel, we're able to rough out carbide at five inches a minute. Our wheel is still holding its edge and it's really giving us a really good finish for a roughing wheel. So our next operation after we flute the wheel with our Terralit StarTech RC wheel, we're gonna go ahead and probe our flutes. That way the machine knows exactly where our flutes are gonna be. So what's gonna happen is our probe's gonna come down, it's gonna find our flute, then it's gonna probe along the flute three different times. That way it knows exactly where our flute's at. So the next operation, we're gonna establish the drill point. For this operation, we're gonna use a Tirolet StarTech XPP DS. This wheel is gonna be a cup wheel and it's known for having a good retaining edge. So if you wanna find out where to find a Tirolet StarTech XPP Plus wheel, you can find these wheels on our store at titansofcnctooling.com. Along with this operation, we're using an 11V9 or a cup wheel, a 1V1 angled wheel, and a 1A1 straight grinding wheel. So after we establish the drill point angle, we need to go in and grind a gashing flute. We're gonna use a 1V1 gashing wheel or a Tirolet StarTech XPP Plus wheel. This is gonna give us our clearance angle, that way we have enough chip evacuation. For our final grind, we have to do a clearance profile grind. 
But this wheel, we have to actually switch to a narrower 1A1 wheel, and we're gonna use a Tyrolet StarTech XPP Plus wheel. This wheel width is gonna be a quarter inch, and that's gonna allow us to grind the outside of our flutes without overhanging. If our wheel is too wide, we're gonna have an issue with grinding the second flute while we're still grinding the first flute. This is another aspect of what makes the Walter Helitronic Power 400 such a versatile machine. You have the capability to hold up to six wheels in your spindle, three on each side. So what we did is we did a triple wheel pack on one side and we did a single 1A1 wheel on spindle two. So what that does is that unleashes the capability of grinding multiple parts with multiple wheels and really unlocks a lot of capabilities to suit your needs. So now that we've proved out a program on our custom drill, we're able to utilize Walter Helitronics Power's 400 top loader. What this top loader does, it allows you to load in a bunch of blanks, go in, pick one up, grind it, and put it in a finished slot. So this is a game changer in the aspects of efficiency because you can write your program, load in your blanks, and walk away. Really good for lights out production. So now with that, let's go ahead and program our top loader. So we're back at our core panel on our Walter Helitronic Power 400. The first step to program our top loader is we're gonna go ahead and program our chuck. We've already done this because the machine needs to know how far out that chuck is in order to grind your very first part. So how I confirmed that is I went in here, it's a classic mode. In my program, what I did was I selected the machine and I'm gonna come down to chuck. So my standard chuck type, I did a user defined chuck. I took this chuck out and measured it and I established that and I created a DXF file and I uploaded it to the machine. So if I come here to edit chuck profile, and here's where you can see where I drew my chuck at. And these are all my lines, and we'll talk more about that on our grinding academy. So now that we've programmed our chuck, we can go ahead and step inside our machine, insert a blank, and verify our runout. So once you install your collet and your chuck, the next thing you want to do is you want to insert a blank and verify your runout using an indicator. What we're looking for here is runout in the part, and if we need to, we can adjust it by moving this tool holder up or down or left or right. That way, every time the top loader picks a part up and puts in the spittle, it's gonna run true. We got zero run out in our part. So we're good to go. Let's finish up our program. So after we program our chuck, the next thing we have to do is we have to install both of our pallets. How I'm gonna install our pallets is I need to find where to locate and input data for our pallets. So I'm gonna come back to the core panel. I'm gonna go home. After I go home, I'm going to look for the icon with the hand. Once I select the hand icon, I'm going to start my reference wizard. So now what I need to do is I need to look for the icons that say top loader. So I'm going to go to top loader. This is where I'm going to input all the data that my pallets have, the depth, the hole size, the length of position from hole to hole, and how many holes there are there in a pallet. So now that we've talked about our pallet position, let's go ahead and take a look at the pallets that we're going to be using. So we're gonna be using two different pallets in this top loader. The first pallet is gonna be one, the second pallet is gonna be zero. The first pallet is gonna hold empty blanks, so the top loader is gonna pick up a blank from the start pallet, it's gonna insert it into the chuck, it's gonna grind, and then after the grind is complete, it's gonna pick it back up and put it in the completed pallet, and then we're gonna to move to the next one. That's gonna be automation. So the size pallet we're gonna be using for this demonstration is we're gonna use quarter inch blanks. I'm gonna pick up my Mitotoyo six inch calipers and I'm gonna make sure it's quarter inch blanks. And on my pallet system, I have a designation of the diameter of a quarter inch. Now, as far as hole positions and length of position from one hole to the next, it's actually labeled directly onto the pallet in both X and Y. After we install these pallets, we're gonna use a reference position and the top loader is gonna pick the probe up it's gonna come and it's gonna to touch the top, the side, and the bottom of both pallets. And that's gonna let the machine know exactly where the pallets are. So now with that, let's go ahead and pick up one of our pallets and install it into our top loader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our pallets in here. We're gonna tighten down our screw and the screw is gonna hold down using a toe clamp on the bottom edge of our pallets. We have two screws on each pallet. So after we do this, all we have to do is come and pick this probe up and probe each one of the sides. So we've talked about programming our chuck, we've talked about programming our pallets. The next thing we have to do is we have to create a batch program. So I'm gonna get out of my tool studio and I'm gonna go into tool studio server. So I'm gonna come over to my core panel and I'm gonna select tool studio. Now, what I'm gonna be looking for is the icon on the far right hand side at the top. Once I select that, that's gonna open up my batch profile. So one thing I wanna keep in mind is at the top, it's gonna be my batch program name. So as you can see, we've already labeled it loader batch. 
I have it programmed in a yellow folder on the pallet on the bottom. I have it labeled as a 250 thousandths pallet and I named it that because the whole size in RP2 pallets are gonna be a quarter of an inch. So now on the top, we have our batch program. On the bottom, we have our pallet program. Now those are married together. We're gonna to assign five different places to turn our blanks into carbide tools. I'm gonna to come over to my keypad on my core panel and I'm gonna select control. Then I'm gonna select one, two, three, four, five. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign the program of what the tool I wanna to make to each of these five blanks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my white folder with the plus sign. I'm gonna select it. Now, this is where I'm gonna call out the tool program number. So I've labeled this as top loader for my custom drill. That way it's easier to marry everything together for me. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come over and there's gonna be a slot with three dotted lines that we're gonna highlight. Once that is highlighted, it's gonna pull up every program I've created. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna find my program that says top loader. So once I select top loader, I'm gonna go hit load. Now that we selected our five different blanks, now what we need to do is we need to put an end program. So we're gonna select number five, and then from here we're gonna select this icon on the bottom, and that's gonna put our end to the program. So now from this step, I have my batch ready to go. The last thing I need to do is I need to select play at the top of the screen and I need to make sure on my core panel on the bottom, I have my loader button selected. So now we can put our carbide blanks into our pallet. So we're gonna put it in first position and we're always gonna put these tools in chamfer side down. Now that we have all five loaded, we can go ahead and run our top loader program. Oh man, check those out. We just completed five custom drills on our Walter Power Helitronic 400. What this machine is capable of is small quantities or really loading this pallet up. But what's a key feature of this Walter is the top loader. The top loader does an amazing job at really automating this process. You can go from five parts to 120 per pallet. You just set it up, walk away. This video was down and dirty on how to set this up. We're gonna talk about it more in the Grinding Academy really in depth. So make sure you check that out. The Tyrolet StarTech XPP Plus wheels really held up their edges and the Tyrolet RC wheel really roughed out that carbide and made this project so much faster. So top loader combined with the Walter Power Helitronic 400 with the pallet system, man, it's gonna make you a dominant force in the grinding industry. We're gonna cover it more in depth in the Grinding Academy. So being able to make content like this is all thanks to our members like BDP Racing. Thank you BDP for supporting free education. If you wanna be like BDP, make sure you check out our Discord, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that notification bell for more content like this. We'll see you on the next one.